plan was that the weddings. This, the plan was this, for this to be a media event. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> doesn't it make sense for you? Huh? That's right. Yeah, yeah this. The planner was missing. Exactly. <laughs> and, and we're still working on the punchline. Yeah. <laughs> no. We are the punchline. Her stock and trade was. There was always a news truck, you know, pulling up when anything she was involved in was taking place. <laughs> and I didn't tell you afterwards. We turn off my phone too. After, afterwards, so we need her phone calls. Right <laughs> after, uh, well, that would be perfect too. At the you know, end, I, I have to, my phone is rung on more than one occasion when I was a little something. At the end, we're going to have fireworks. <laughs> That's right, the largest fire, and we're fair it's actually getting nippy. Glad you guys yeah. it is. The temperature will be dropping. <laughs> we'll only pick it. It's a big, big company. So, are those other people? They aren't going to get out. Folks, everybody here needs to be here. Uh, I, I would say yes. I think we are. Okay? Because it's 11 o'clock, and I will wait if there's anyone else who has to be here. If no, not, this I, is it. We're here. I think uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna start. Yes. Okay. And there'll be a point where we can um, have some readings ourselves. I have uh, something I'd like to read. Absolutely. Okay. okay. I'm gonna I'll take the the <laughs> the, the, uh, the prerogatives of the beginning. I made some comments, and that's gonna be wide open. Okay. Open mic at the group. Thank you. Okay. Well, folks, uh, we're gathered together to uh, bid farewell to two sisters. Ruth Beresdorf, Nan Naomi Miller, and we pray that their memory will be a blessing to all of us. And that's why we're gathered here really is to recount their memories. And uh, of course we call to mind the love that united us in life for them, their companionship, the gifts of their hearts and their minds that brought us joy and happiness for all these are good thanks to God. And we're going to start with a couple of comforting words from Scripture. First, the 23rd Psalm. Adonai You can join me in English if you know it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here is a passage from the book of Ecclesiastes, often set to music and words of deep comfort. For everything, a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot that which is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep, a time to discard. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. In the Jewish calendar, Today is the eighth and final day of Hanukkah, which is the festival of lights. There is a Torah portion for today in which we learn of the chieftains of the people of Israel who brought offerings for the celebration of Hanukkah Hamizbeach, the dedication of the altar. Miraculously, every single chieftain on their own accord brought an identical offering of riches and sacrifice. What is our gift today? What's our offering? The best gift would be the gift of our hearts to share the memories we hold for two beloved sisters, Ruth Beresdorf and Nan Naomi Miller. Zichronan Livracha. We pray what their memories will be for blessing, they who cared deeply for each other all of their lives. They were born a few years apart, but talked almost every day of their lives in person or by phone. They were best friends, 
and they died only days apart. They're together now, in this grave, in the life to come, and in our hearts. That sure knowledge is a wonderful gift for the eighth day of Hanukkah. Both sisters grew up here attending Walnut Hills High School and the University of Cincinnati. Living in Cincinnati meant being in close proximity to Hebrew Union College. And they made many friends among the student rabbis and dated them as well. Both Naomi and Ruth always kept close ties with their childhood friends in Cincinnati. To them, Cincinnati was not a large city, but the small town in which they grew up. Ruth, after completing her studies at UC, proudly went on to earn her master's degree in social psychology at the University of Chicago, devoting her professional life to working for our government as a social administrator. Her first marriage was to Isaac Zeke Levine. After her divorce, Nan took her under her wing. Later, she married Mike Beersdorf, moving to California, and then back to our part of the country in Louisville. Her social involvement and her liberal political nature, as her family has said, will be deeply missed. And she is survived by sons Joseph and David and her grandchildren Dustin and Alexa, dear friend Toby and beloved friend Diane, stepmother to David. Now, Nan was considered a great leader in the field of public relations. I don't need to tell you that. I enjoyed reading about her deeds called the Queen of Special Events by the Los Angeles Times. After graduating from UC, she married her Edward, an electrical engineer. They began as partners in life as well as in work. Together they promoted Sherwood stereo equipment throughout the country. Her great calling, as you know, however, was in the field of public relations. She became an executive in the field, launching incredible and creative projects for hotels, for the first Special Olympics, the largest ice cream sundae ever created to promote a dairy, the largest root beer float in the world for a root beer company, there's a root beer, I think, and the world's largest ribbon-cutting ceremony to launch the Long Beach Arbor. She created the world's largest group portrait, 18,000 leaders and celebrities on an 80-foot billboard to promote the Los Angeles Olympic Games in 1984. She taught and mentored many others who were to follow in her footsteps. Toby, you called her one of the most positive of all people in the world. She is mourned by her three sons, Daryl, Bruce, and Mitchell, as well as her four grandchildren, Megan, Emmaus, Nathaniel, and Jacob. Now, you folks, as the sun is beginning to make its emergence, right? will have the opportunity to share some special memories of these two remarkable women. Now it's your time. I think David wanted to start first, David. You know what I noticed? And Nan's favorite thing to always tell me, because I lived in L.A. with her during my 20s, during the time you'd go with somebody and break up, and everything was, you know, everything was, like, dramatic. When you're in your 20s, everything is, you know death tomorrow um, but she would always say behind every dark cloud is a silver lining and there's the and sun here it is <laughs> nan brought that silver lining to us so that's your last yeah. class pr and, trick and yeah. it really, it really was. she she was she's here you know and she always said uh and and then her last thing was hope springs eternal it was the most positive, most wonderful, most loving, the best friend I've ever had in my whole life. I thank God for her, <laughs> Tracy Toby. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do. Well, I guess I'm really here, you know, perhaps the only one to represent Ruth, but as I stand here, I just want to say how much I love my Aunt Nan. She was as much a mother to me as mm -hmm. anyone. She considered me one of her sons. Mm -hmm. I think she raised us all. Mm -hmm. She was my sorority mother and she helped raise me. When I moved to LA, 
I, I got to know her. I didn't really know her that well. I always tell everybody that she was the only friend of my mother's who would come in and she would come in with like beads and hats and she, I'd be in the playpen and I would go, who's that? I want to know that person. And, and she was just always full of life and full of excitement and there was always something wonderful. And then I was in LA and I think Bruce was living there and there were a bunch of people with your group that were living there and then then Joey and, and David came there <laughs> and then who was it Mel and, and, and oh, that other crazy guy oh, right. <laughs> yeah. and it didn't I went there every Sunday night all the years I lived there and had dinner and you never knew who was going to come out or what they were going to say or what was going to happen the door was always unlocked never locked her doors she she was the most remarkable person that ever walked this planet mm -hmm. i mean she was just look at this look at the sky <laughs> look at this this is i mean this tells you everything she was really incredible mm -hmm. and and being there and she'd always be throwing a party and everybody's welcome she'd water down the soup <laughs> she took care of she would it didn't matter who you were she was always there for you mm. and she was she was the most wonderful human being that ever walked she really was and i miss her and i really loved her i want to read something Who's going to take that? Yeah. Look at this. My wife has never done yeah, this before. You want before. me to do it? Yeah. You're not used to be in TV news, no. Julie. So uh, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> you want to, yeah, tell me you do it. So this arrived unsolicited from um, Penny Webster, who was, um, he was, she was my former girlfriend, but she's now a very, very close friend of Karen's. It's all in the family. And unbeknownst to me, she actually worked with me on for a brief while. And so it's like, oh my God, this is the best obituary that's ever been written. And not only that, it's written in longhand without any corrections, which I find amazing that people could even <laughs> still do such a thing. Right. It says, Dearest Bruce, I've been holding very precious memories of your mom in my heart. She definitely was an example of someone who knew how to manifest a life well lived. I'm going to start crying. Okay. <laughs> Join the crowd. <laughs> oh, with her outrageous courage and pizzazz, which uh, brought an enormous amount of joy and admiration to and from so many people. She was an extraordinary woman who lived out of the box, who lived out of any box that could ever have been imagined. My thoughts of her make me smile and at times even laugh out loud. Yes, she may have enjoyed being the center of attention and in the limelight, like so many Aries do, but that not only radiated light from her to others, but also caused numerous smiles and striking inspiration to be as daring and as imaginative as she was. And gutsy enough to pull off her wondrous and at times magical shenanigans. <laughs> what a bright spirit she was. My memories of Nan include a great deal of intelligence as well as warmth and sensitivity. I'm grateful I had the opportunity to work with her for a time as I remember her paying me a very generous wage and she was a strong force in my life to recognize my value as a human being, more than I had felt before. She was always extremely encouraging and supportive. Her seemingly endless positivity and uh, engagement with life and the world and her incredible imagination added something so very special to our world and the human heart. No cookie cutters or molds could ever come close to imitating her 
and that is remarkable. What a gift she was and so life affirming. I still can't believe she has quote unquote gone from this dimension, though I truly believe she will continue living in so many hearts and minds as she possessed the quality of eternal youth and optimism, which we all could use a strong dose of in our human foibles. Nan was a powerful woman to be reckoned with, as you well know, and what a ray of light she emitted. I remember her bright smile so well, her constant motion and activity, even exercising on her mini trampoline, and sometimes having her makeup a bit smeary because she was in such a hurry. In such a hurry with excitement to get on to the next activity or creative project she was uh, ready to embark on. Bruce, my heart is with you. What a gift it was for you to visit her when you did, thanks to Karen. You know, I got to visit her just before she died and I had not seen her for two years. And what amazing um, move on the part of the universe to have you be in the Baha'i Temple at the time of Derry's phone call. That's when I found out she had died. Uh -huh. It is so beautiful to see that kind of attunement with life and connections, and so it is obvious that there was a strong bond of love between you. I send you so much love and hugs. It's not an easy thing to have one's mother move on. I did feel at times that Nan could be the one to defy the odds and keep going. <laughs> I still miss my mom just about every day. Please know that you are loved and you were well loved by her, even if she was often the star, capital S, capital <laughs> I believe you were her true sh shining star and will continue to be so. Please give my love to Karen as she was close to Nan also. I'm sure she will miss her presence here too. I know I already do. Blessings and heartfelt warm remembrance and love, Penny. Oh. So that's better than anything I could write yeah. because being oh. her son, you would never write such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> So, Do you want me to give this back to you? I think so. We'll just pass it around. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'd like to. Uh, you, you go ahead. Okay. Um, I asked Joey, um, cousin Joey, uh, whose son, uh, if he had a word to say. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it. He fell sick. And he, there was two things that he he um, he told me. Uh, first was uh, like David said that Nan was more of a mother to him than his real mother. And I said, you know, it's, what are you saying? It's impossible. Uh, uh, if, because for all my life, Nan was not the typical mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, and even uh, between uh, Bruce, Derry, uh, myself. We would never call her mom. It would always be the mother, because she was something on another level. And I, uh, one experience I want to share with you is when I was uh, in third grade. Uh, every uh, year, uh, the mother would ha the mothers would have to come for one day to help out uh, serve lunch in the cafeteria. <laughs> and, uh, we already know where this is going. I've never heard the story. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, uh, this was in Chicago, and uh, so so Nan came uh, to help serve lunch and had to put on an apron. But um, I was so embarrassed uh, for <laughs> her to come and, and sit with me. She was wearing uh, these uh, leather boots, uh, a mini skirt, <laughs> a, a, a fur coat. Um, it was like, you know, why can't I just have a typical normal mother? I mean, why did I? And, and here's Joey saying, you know, here she was the real mother, but for me, she wasn't the mother. Uh, completely the, the the opposite. And you know, and I feel in, in my life, I've I've gone searching for the the, the real mother. Uh, now I have my mother-in-law, who's who's on a, a, the, the the complete opposite. Uh, she, she can yell, and three seconds later she'll be hugging you and kissing you and loving you. It's uh, a warmth that, uh, that, that, I've, that I never had with my mother, which is uh, on a different level. Um, uh, secondly, Joey said, uh, talking about Ruth, um, uh, one thing that I will never forget about uh, Ruth is that she had a sense of humor. And even though she would uh, go on off uh, her spells of 
of uh, depression or this or that. She had a sense of humor. And uh, this week I, I read through some of the, the papers that Ruth's father uh, wrote to Ruth uh, in the 50s. And Ruth's father had this sense of humor as well. And here he is, a very serious doctor. Uh, um, uh, in 1959, right before he passed away, uh, Ruth was very depressed. He, she wanted to come back to Cincinnati. Um, uh, Nathan said, no, uh, stay with Nan. Uh, I don't want you to come back to Cincinnati. It'll be too hard for, for me, for, for your mother. Um, and she asked Nan to take her under her, her wing, which is, is actually when you, when you, if you read the story of uh, Naomi and Ruth, um, it's, uh, the, the parallels are so similar where uh, uh, Ruth uh, bore the son, um, Nan took the, the kids, or Naomi took the, the, uh, uh, the son under her wing as her own son, um, and uh, in our family, my brother Bruce, he as well, he has this, this sense of humor. I have a sense of humor. Uh, my daughter Megan, if you read her writing, she has this, the same gift. It's this humor that just, uh, it comes down from heaven. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very unique. And I'm very blessed uh, to be part of this family for having this humor. Uh, and lastly, what I want to say is, uh, the week before Nan passed away, I felt she she blessed me. Uh, uh, she uh, she couldn't stop talking how how proud she is of me, how sh proud she is of my wife, how proud she is of uh, my my two ch children. And for me, I want to bless my mother. Uh, at this moment and thank her uh, and as David and Joy say they had uh, a second mother me as well with Ruth she was a, a second mother to me she was always around and as well I had two additional brothers uh, David and Joy who were close to me uh, so it was a very large family and I appreciate it very much thank you You gonna say something, Karen? Yeah. Uh, Before you well, do it, here we go. This is what it's like to be married in the Nan, the <laughs> Miller family here. Uh, yeah. Wow. I didn't even think about what I was gonna say today, but uh, I first of all wanted to think about. I was thinking about Ruthie, and she was very um, important in our life. We spent a lot of time with her early on when we first got married. She would come to all our gatherings, all the, the kids' birthday parties, and she always uh, was a big part of helping out with all that. She also, she I realized she gave me some of the silver that belonged to her, which I think I should get to you, um, that she gave to me, because she wanted us to carry on the tradition of the which is really beautiful. And for many, many years, for at least 20 years of our 30 years of marriage, she sent us an anniversary card every year. Do you remember that, Bruce? I couldn't even remember yeah. my anniversary. I know. Well, it helped that the card from Aunt Ruthie would come a week before, so before, <laughs> uh, before the event. So that was really touching to me. She really supported our marriage, which was really important. And so I'm really grateful for Aunt Ruthie. And also, Nana, um, she, she was a force of nature. She absolutely was. And the thing I remember also about her was when we first got married, she, at some point, she gave me an article about what it's like to be a mother-in-law. And it was sort of, uh, it was funny, but it was also truthful that it was how hard it is to be a mother-in-law. You know, and I actually remember at our wedding, she actually cried at our wedding. Um, and I, I can see that now because I have two sons, and so I can understand that, who have not yet married, but one of these days. So we, uh, she did turn, uh, she taught me a lot about how to be a mother-in-law. She was a wonderful mother-in-law. She um, 
she never uh, corrected my parenting style and she um, she was always supportive she would come and take when particularly when Nathaniel was little she would come and stay with him and she was really uh, a wonderful mother and and when I was with her if particularly in the early years I thought okay I'm gonna remember this and when I have children and when they grow up and have have their wives I'm gonna remember how to be a mother because of what I need. I look forward to that day <laughs> my boys have kids they marry yeah thank you yeah you want to say something David oh no no okay if Nana wasn't a typical mom for my dad, she also wasn't the typical grandma for me. She was always out looking for the next biggest thing. She taught my sister and I how to square dance. And I still remember that to this day. And what else? Oh, on the phone, she was always asking me when I was going to join a sorority. She was more of a college girl than I am. And she's always asking me uh, about boyfriends and all of that. She told me about how in Salt Lake City she would pick up guys on the pier. And all these <laughs> great <laughs> funny stories. Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Oh, <laughs> Saltwater taffy. <laughs> <laughs> She'd always say she would look forward to seeing me graduate, and I'm sad yeah, that she won't get to see that. Folks, you learned so many fee to have young be la fanecha, and I'm not sure if go ali. May the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable unto God, which indeed they were words of loving memory. So to all who mourn, beloved children, cousins to each other as well, Joseph, David, Daryl, Bruce, and Mitchell, to the precious grandchildren, Ruth's Dustin and Alexa, and Nan's Megan, Emmaus, Nathaniel, and Jacob, to dear friends Toby, and to Diane, David's stepmother, to all who remember their kindness, the creativity, and the love they held for their families, for each other, may God bring comfort to all of you who mourn, and may Ruth and Nan Naomi's memories continue to bless our days. Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehi Shem, Adonai Mavarach, God has given, God has taken away, blessed be the name of God. Baruch Atah Adonai Dayan HaEmet, we praise you, O God, you are the judge of truth. Baruch atah Adonai, notea b'tochenu chaye olam. We praise you, O God, you've implanted immortal life within us. Gentlemen, gentlemen, can we now bury the cremains? Al Nikomo Yavo Ruth Bat Natan, the Naomi Bat Natan Bishalom. May Ruth, the daughter of Natan, and Naomi, the daughter of Natan, come to their eternal home in peace. The dust returns to the earth as it was, the spirit returns to God who gave it. Receive in mercy, O God the beloved souls of Ruth, the daughter of Natan, and Noami, the daughter of Natan. Grant them the everlasting peace which you have prepared for us in the world to come. Though no human eye has seen it, nor ear has heard it, nor mind has grasped it, still it is our sure inheritance and our everlasting portion. Those who know the words, you can join me in the mourner's Kaddish, this is a Aramaic prayer.
which doesn't mention death at all, but is an extended praise of God recited by the mourner, even in the midst of his or her sorrow. Yit Gadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabah, Yalma Divra Chirute, Yam Lich Machute, Vichayechon, Vyomechon, Vichaye de Cholbet Yisrael, Vagala Visman Kari Vimaru, Amen, Yehe Shme Raba Mivarach, La Alam Ul Ame Almaya, Yit Barach, Vishtabach, Vit Bar, Vit Romam, Vit Lasse. Viet Hadar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shmed Kutcha, Brichu, La Ela Min Kol Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbechata, Venechamata, Da Amiran Bialma, Vimaru, Amen, Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shmaya, Vichayim, Alenu, Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimaru, Amen, O Se Shalom, Bim Ramav, Uya Se Shalom, Alenu, Amen. We conclude with the memorial chant. Rachamim <laughs> Et nishmot rut bat natan venoomi bat natan shal hachu leol aman ba'aharachamim yasti rehen v'seiter kenafav leolamim b'itzror b'itzror hachaim et nishmatan Adonai hu nachavatan v'yanuchu shalom. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Ruth Piersdorf and Nan Naomi Miller, they who have entered eternity. God of mercy, may they find refuge in the shadow of your wings. May their souls be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is their inheritance. May they rest in peace. Let us say, Amen. Amen. May God bring you comfort as you continue to mourn, continue to remember. And we say, Amen. Amen. Please our service. According to posterity, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody spoke to you. You want to stay? You can stay here for a while if you want. Or, you know, um, She's still a sorority girl. Okay. <laughs> Good luck to everybody. Have safe travels. Hope you stay in the town until you're leaving today. You going back today, everybody? I'm leaving. We'll go here, uh, Nathan, Nathan. And once the market get here, we'll set it at the top of here. Where's the top there? Sir, where, 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 where exactly is, is this one going? Um, or is it actually in the, in the it? line of this here? Okay, so, so, it's, so it's probably right here? No, up top, up top where he's standing. Okay. We don't want to put them too close together. Yeah. Uh, just in case the lawn will come through. Necessary, but since thank you, you should be.
experts at this. We spent so many times with so many years with Eddie. Yeah. Oh, that's so <laughs> Moving with the, dirt. The black dirt, right? <laughs> exactly. David. David. Jean, Sylvie. I'll do it.